Last Sunday in church council, uh, we talked about investments. Investments. We talked about the investment funds of our congregation and how they are doing well. Yeah, that's good news. The treasurer and uh, um, uh, endowment chair were here at the first service and gave me a thumbs up that I'm on track. So that was good. Uh, we also talked about the financial investment of you, our congregation, of us, and what's in God's mission uh, here at LCR. And we talked about that investment being so generous and so supportive that we are on a very solid financial position uh, to support ministry. That's a wonderful thing, a really good thing. So thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your financial support for all the things that God is doing here. Thank you. Um, and thank you also for joining me and my family in doing that. Uh, because sometimes as a pastor, people look at you and say, you're kind of crazy. Yeah? Yeah, just a little bit. Why are you doing that? But it's good to know that brothers and sisters like you guys also are saying, yeah, we see this as important. What God is doing here is really important. We're going to put our money to it through the offering plate or through giving online. So thank you for your generosity. Generosity continued uh, this weekend as Pastor Dave is with uh, 38 of our men from LCR uh, investing in their relationship with Jesus Christ this weekend uh, out at Luther Ranch. Uh, yesterday, Andrea Roach, our youth director, and myself, uh, we were also at Luther Ranch, a different part of the campus, um, with 15 of our confirmation students and chaperones who were investing in their relationship with Jesus. They were talking about baptism and about communion and about the promises that we make as part of affirmation of baptism. Today, you are investing in your relationship with Jesus by being here in worship. You come here expecting Jesus to meet you in bread and wine. You come here expecting Jesus to speak to you through the scriptures and through the sermon. And in those scriptures today, you heard about being invested in God's mission. Jonah who after the lovely experience with the whale um, or the big fish or whatever it was, um, was, he was pretty reluctant to go do God's mission, right? God said, go here. And he said, no, I'm going that way. And God said, that's cute. Here we go. We'll send you back to where you need to be going, Jonah. Yet even so, Jonah still goes to Nineveh um, and is invested in God's mission there, go going even to his hated enemies to proclaim God's message. In 1 Corinthians, Paul highlights some of the things that can get in our way of investing with the Lord. His message is summed up a few verses later when he writes in verse 35, live in undivided devotion to the Lord. So don't let your spouse or grief or joy or your stuff or your work get in the way of the investment you make in God. Instead, may it be that these multiply your investment in the Lord. Our Gospel writer Mark lifts up four men who invest everything in Jesus' mission. Literally, they heard Jesus' call and they walked away from their jobs to invest in Jesus. They invested their futures, their reputations, their next meal in Jesus and in His mission. That's serious investment. Serious investment. But that kind of investment is not confined just to the Bible. Remember how I started off the sermon, how I have seen you invest in God's mission. I've seen you investing in your own relationship with Jesus and in God's mission through our congregation, through LCR. And today I want to tell some of those stories as part of our Christian response campaign of how we are investing in God's mission. However, there's a twist today um, because I want you to think about not about yourself, but about the person next to you. So go ahead and say hello to the person next to you and we're going to think about that. So introduce yourself to the person next to you. If there's no one next to you, find somebody. Y'all are friendly, so say hello to somebody. Everybody got somebody, got somebody. Do you have somebody? Good, good, good. Wonderful. All right, good. 
So say hello to your neighbor. That's good. Um, if you forgot the name of your neighbor, introduce yourself again and ask him for their name. Good, good. Now that you've said hello to your neighbor and you know their name, that's important. I want you to think about your neighbor and about this gift of this person who is created in the image of God. And think about what's one way that you have seen your neighbor invest in God's mission. How have they invested in God's mission? Maybe you've seen them invest in God's mission through our LCR. Maybe they taught Sunday school or maybe they begin their day with prayer. Uh, perhaps you've seen them invest in God's mission because of LCR. Maybe they've come here to this table and received communion and said, wow, I've been fed by God. Now I'm going to go in the strength of the Lord and feed others. Maybe at must ministries. Or maybe uh, you've, they've had God uh, work in their lives and inspire them to make a generous financial donation perhaps to uh, maybe a refugee family. Or maybe you don't know your neighbor. And that's okay. Because you do know that they're here today in worship. They are here investing in their relationship with Jesus and in our community's life with God. So you do know that, if nothing else. So take a minute, think about your neighbor, and then share with them one way that you have seen them invest in God's mission through LCR. All right, we've had some good sharing. This is good. This is good. So now one more question for your neighbor. Ask your neighbor if you can share their story with the rest of the congregation. They can say no, or they could say yes. So ask your neighbor, and if your neighbor says yes, you may share my story with the rest of the congregation, then hold up your hand and I'm going to bring you the microphone. All right, good. And if your neighbor doesn't say yes, then tell them that they can share your story. All right, and so as, you, as we come around, uh, grab the mic, and you don't have to stand up, but everybody else stand up when, when we come to you. Thank you. Uh, this is George, and George has a passion for singing, and he has a passion for reading scripture, and I appreciate that from George. Wonderful. A great investment. Thank you. Thank you. Virginia also has invested in yells. Uh, with puppet ministry and puppet making and reading. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, to your neighbor, to your neighbor. I have two neighbors. My neighbor, Wally, my husband. Uh, uh, he was an elder in another church for many years. And my neighbor, Ron, he's invested in the circle group playing for them. Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> so this is Mitchell. This is, he was my neighbor, and he comes pretty much every Sunday, and plays the trombone for us um, very nicely, and sometimes he's like making it up as he goes along, and it's pretty impressive to me, and uh, yeah, and that, that was it. Great investment, thank you. Well, my neighbor is the wonderful Kathy Ritchie, and I'm blessed to know her. She's led me to two amazing Lutheran churches, this being one, but we both talked about what our biggest investment was, and of course it's our, between the two of us, six children, three each, and the investment we had by sending them to a firm, which is in June every year. And the seeds of faith that were planted during those weeks have taken our, at that time, children, young teens, and made them grow into very faith-filled adults that are full of the power of the Holy Spirit. And we can say, six out of six are good kids. <laughs> Wouldn't you say? All right. Oh, fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Connor, and my neighbor is Cameron. And one way that he has been invested is we actually started a small group, and he was a big part of that for us. And he got baptized the other week, which is kind of, which is kind of amazing. And, um, and we also helped with the refugee house. We cleared some brush, and he was a big part of that. Hi, I'm Cameron. Um, this is Connor. Um, he's been to Guatemala. He's done the refugee. We started a, a small youth group. And this is my friend, Steven. <laughs> And he's not sitting next to me, but he called me this week because he cares about me because my mother died recently. And he is very invested in the life and the excitement of this family of faith. So my neighbor is Mark, 
and he's come here and he's invested his time out of his day to come worship with us and, and um, share in the love of Jesus Christ. Yes, that's a huge investment. Thank you. This is Noel, my neighbor and husband. He invests by coming almost every Sunday and even when I'm not in town, he tries to bring our kids. But what really is a great investment is when I hear him praying with our kids at night. I love how the spirit moves. This is also going to be an advertisement, too. This is my father, who's been my neighbor for 55 years. All right, all right. <laughs> um, my faith is a big part of growing up with my mom and my dad. Um, as part of that, I became involved in Fellowship of Christian Athletes when I was in high school and all through college. And I'm, we, have, uh, we have our Fellowship of Christian Athletes banquet for East Cobb in a couple of weeks, and we got Kirby Smart to be the speaker. Cool. Wow, that's huge. Good, in, good investments. Great. All of these stories... The ones we shared, the ones we didn't, the ones that Virginia's going to tell later. <laughs> yeah, the next service, which starts in another hour. Kidding. Um, these are all responses to what God has done first in our lives. How God has invested in you and in us. God who's invested in you with giving you life and breath and shelter. God who woke you up this morning and brought you here. The God who invests in you with Word and the Holy Spirit, with baptism and with communion. It's the same God who, who invested in Jonah by calling him and not letting him go, even sending that big fish to go get him. Come on, Jonah. That's serious investment that later would take on flesh and walked among the fishermen on the shores of the Sea of Galilee an investment that called, follow me and I will make you fish for people. An investment that would say, this is my body given for you. My blood shed for you. An investment from God that would stretch out His hands even on a cross and give everything for you. Yes, this Jesus is God's investment in you and in me. But it's God's investment that death could not hold. An investment that was raised from the dead on the third day. An investment that is among us here, speaking to us, comforting us, feeding us, directing us, leading us, and guiding us. And I fully expect that this Jesus, that he will continue to lead and guide you. He will continue to invest in you this year. And so today, the question is this. In the coming year, how will you grow your investment in Jesus? How will you grow your investment in God's mission through our congregation?